Hi students, I hope all of you had good health. Today we will be beginning with our next video lesson on nervous system. Now, what is nervous system? Actually, it's a system which is mainly comprised of a specialized tissue which is known as neuron which helps in coordinating all activities in our body. For example, whenever you feel cold, what do you do students? You actually go and take a sweater or some warm cloth and you wear it. Why you do so? Because you know that after wearing the sweater, you will feel warm. Now the question is, who receives this information that whether you are feeling cold or not? Now this information is received by our brain, which is again comprised of this specialized tissue, which is known as neuron. And again, this brain instructs your muscle to walk or go and take a warm cloth or sweater so that you can wear it and you can feel warm. And as soon as you feel warm, what happens? Finally, you stop shivering. You stop shivering, you stop uh, feeling cold and finally your body attains a stable state. This is one example. Now you think of another situation student. Suppose, what happens? You are feeling that you are having a severe stomach ache. Now students, when you are having a severe stomach ache, what do you think? What may be the reason for it? The reason may be due to some food poisoning, due to some gastroenteritis problem or some other things. Now immediately what happens students? You go, you take medicine and after some time you become fine. Now the question is, Who understands or who gets or receives the information that whether you are feeling cold or not? Or who understands or receives the information that whether you are having your stomach ache or not? Again, the answer is brain. Now again, when brain receives this information, what happens? It instructs your hands or muscles of the hands to take the medicine and get well soon. Again, your body attends a stable state. That means always a coordination is occurring between the different organs, glands or parts of your body, which is maintaining a very, very stable relationship with the external environment and the internal and the internal with the internal. Now here is a picture which is shown over here, students, which shows the connection of different nervous tissue in our body. Now as you can see, students, that as like our blood vessels and the blood, 
which we have already read in our previous video lessons, that is the circulatory system, we see that in a similar way, this nervous tissue also is found throughout the body and wherever it goes or not, all reaches the same point, that is the brain and the spinal cord. That means whatever information that is being received from any parts of the body is carried by means of the nerve to the brain and the spinal cord and the spinal cord works accordingly. First of all, the first function of the nervous system is to receive a stimulus. Now the question is, what is a stimulus? Now stimulus is any agent in the environment that may cause an organism to respond. Now the stimulus can be anything. For example, you are touching a hot cup, whether a mosquito is biting you, whether someone is pinpinching you, whatever may be the scenario, whenever you touch a hot cup, instantly you move your hand. Whenever somebody pinpinches you, you just uh, remove your hand. Again, when a mosquito bites you, you use your another hand to kill it. Now the thing is, whatever may be the stimulus which is acting at any point of the body, immediately this information is transmitted to the brain by means of the nerves. Now what happens? The second step, conversion of stimulus occurs. Now what is this conversion of stimulus? Now the information which is received in the form of hot cup, then uh, mosquito biting, whatever. This is converted into a stimulus, converted into a nerve impulse, okay? Nerve impulse is generated at one point of the body, just like whenever you switch on uh, the switches, of your home in order to switch on the fan. Whenever you switch on uh, the switches, what happened? Instantly the circuit is completed and the electricity or electric current starts flowing to the fan so that it gets rotated. Similarly, whenever a stimulus works at a one point of your body, it activates the nerves so that it can generate the nerve impulse. And finally, by means of this nurse, it reaches the brain and spinal cord. So that is the third point, transmission of stimulus. Next is interpretation and analysis of the stimulus. Like whether the stimulus is a hot cup or whether the stimulus is some kind of sound or whether the stimulus is some kind of tasty food whatever the stimulus may be that is interpreted okay like what kind of sound we are getting whether it's a noise or whether it's a music now what is the taste of the food whether it is bitter sour salty or sweet now this interpretation is entirely done by our brain and finally depending upon the interpretation the brain and the spinal cord instructs the muscle and glands of our body to work accordingly. And whenever the body will start, start working, depending upon the stimulus so received, this change in behavior of the organism is known as the response. So let us move on to the next slide for our better understanding of this chapter. 
Next is structure of a typical neuron. Now here is the structure of a typical neuron students as you can see this. Now what are the different structures which uh, what are the different parts that comprises the structure of neuron let us see. First of all here is the short branched processes students as you can see this short branch processes which is coming out from the centrally rounded part this is known as the dendrite. The main function of dendrite is to receive the stimulus from all directions okay. Next this dendrites join together to form short branch process which is known as the dendron. Next, this is the nucleus and this entire rounded body is known as the cyton. Next is this rounded structure which is known as the cyton or the cell body. It consists of some granular particles within it along with some muscles. Next, this rounded cell body or cyton continues as a long process as you can see students over here this is known as the axon this entire long thing is known as the axon this axon is surrounded by a insulating layer which is known as the myelin sheath. Myelin sheath actually insulates the nerve or the neuron so that there is no intermixing of nerve impulse between the neurons and and the entire nerve impulse transmission may occur in a very fast way. Next is the node of Renvier. This constriction in between this, uh, this is the neurolemma part. This constriction which can be seen over here is known as the node of Renvier. Now this node of Renvier <coughs> actually are constrictions means whenever or wherever the uh, myelin sheath is absent it forms the node of Renvier and just at the end we get terminal branches which is also known as the axon terminal so this is so this is the structure of a typical neuron which you can uh, see over here dear students let us move on to the next part. Next is the function of the different parts of neuron. Like first we have the dendrite. Now the main function of dendrite is to receive information from one neuron and transmit it to the cell body. So wherever the information uh, from wherever it is coming, you know, wherever the stimulus is coming, okay, <clears throat> this dendrite receive information from all of the neurons and just simply pass it to the uh, next part which is known as the dendron. Now dendron is the short branch process of the cell body which mainly transfer the nerve impulse from dendrite into the cyton. Now what is cyton then? It is the typical cell like structure as I have shown you in my previous slide. This rounded structure which you can see students over here. This is the cyton or the cell body. Now the main function of the cyton or the cell body 
is to interpret the signals and conduct it through axon. This is the main function. Then what is the function of axon? Axon is a single long process arising from one region of the cell body. It conducts message away from the cell body. That means it mainly carries the information from the cyton and finally passes this message away from the cell body so that it can move on to the next neuron. Next we have axon terminal. The main function of axon terminal is what? It mainly consists of a special chemical which is known as the neurotransmitter. And this neurotransmitter whenever required is discharged from the axon terminal which helps in transmission of the nerve impulse across the synapse. Now the next question is what is a synapse? Synapses, the intercommunicating junctions between two neurons. So whenever two neurons are placed end to end and a gap is found between these two neurons, this gap is known as the synapse. The intercommunicating junction, so where this uh, junction which communicates with each other, that is between the axon terminal of one neuron and the dendrites of the or the cell body of another neuron. This junction is known as the synapse. Next is the different types of neuron. So the diagram which is shown over here, dear students, it illustrates the type of neuron so found in our body. Now neurons are mainly of three types. Sensory neuron, interneuron and motor neuron. Now the question is what are this? Let me explain you. Suppose you are touching a hot cup, extremely hot cup. What happens students? You immediately remove your hand, right? Now who is actually carrying this information from your skin to the brain? The type of neuron which carries the nerve impulse from your skin, that is the receptor, to the brain and spinal cord, which is known as the central nervous system. I repeat, the central nervous system is known as the sensory neuron. So what is sensory neuron? Once more, it is the type of neuron which carries the nerve impulse from the receptor like the skin to the central nervous system for interpretation. So this is the sensory neuron. Then what is interneuron? Now this is another neuron as you can see students. This neuron is actually carrying information or nerve impulse between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron. It acts as a intercommunicating or association neuron which is simply transferring this information from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron. Then what is motor neuron? Motor neuron is a type of neuron that carries nerve impulse from the brain and spinal cord that is the central nervous system to the muscle or the effector. That means whenever you are touching a hot cup, this information carries by the sensory neuron from your skin to the central nervous system. 
In the central nervous system, this information reaches the motor neuron by means of the interneuron. And whatever the brain and spinal cord instructs, that is to remove your hand from the hot cuff, this information is carried by the motor neuron from your central nervous system, that is brain and spinal cord, to the effector organ or the gland, that is muscles of your hand to remove your hand. Now, effector can be anything students, don't only uh, just uh, think that muscles are only the effector organ, no. Uh, the glands in our body is also the effector organ and they all work under the influence of this neuron or the nerves under the uh, instruction which is provided from the central nervous system. So I hope you have understood these three types of neuron. Next is our human nervous system. Now this human nervous system is mainly comprised or divided into three parts the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system and the autonomous nervous system now the central nervous system students is mainly comprised of brain and the spinal cord the peripheral nervous system this is mainly comprised of the cranial and the spinal nerve and the autonomic nervous system mainly comprised of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Now let us discuss in details here, what are these parts. But before moving on to the different parts, let me give you one example. Central nervous system is one of the part in your body which carries information from all parts of your body and interprets it and after interpretation it sends the instruction to the different glands and muscles of our body that is the effector to work accordingly. So the part of the body which receives the information and interprets it accordingly and sends the instruction is known as the central nervous system. This is the brain and spinal cord. Then what is peripheral nervous system? It is the nervous system, part of nervous system which carries information from the external environment. That is, suppose you are, touched, you are touching a hot cup or a mosquito is biting you. These are all activities which is uh, being done in the external environment. Now, this type of information is carried to the central nervous system by peripheral nervous system. And whatever the central nervous system instructs the parts of the body to work accordingly. That is, suppose when a mosquito is coming and biting you, you will start hitting it with your another hand. Now, this instruction is entirely provided by the peripheral nervous system under the instruction from central nervous system. That means the interaction between the periphery and the internal environment is entirely done between this peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. Next is autonomic nervous system. It is comprised of two parts, that is sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Now this two information is mainly concerned with internal environment. Suppose your blood sugar is rising or you are lacking with energy or you are having some stomach ache all this information which is occurring or arising internally in your body or organs due to malfunctioning of different parts of your body is carried to the central nervous system for interpretation and after in interpretation again central nervous system instructs your 
internal organs to work accordingly. Now this communication which is being established between the internal environment and the central nervous system is entirely done by our autonomic nervous system. Now let us discuss in detail. This is the brain. As you can see students, here is a diagram which represents the structure of brain. Now brain is mainly divided into three parts. The forebrain, as you can see in this part, the midbrain in the middle, the hindbrain at the back part of the brain. The forebrain is comprised of three parts, that is cerebrum, hypothalamus, olfactory lobes. The midbrain is not so much developed in human, but still it is there. Next is the hindbrain. It is comprised of cerebellum, pons varoli, and the medulla oblongata. Now this two part pons and the medulla oblongata together forms the brain stem. So this is the internal structure of a brain and I hope you have understood what are the different parts which are present over here. Now this brain is entirely covered by a bony covering which is known as the skull and this foldings which you can see over here students is known as the meninges. Now this meninges again consists of a fluid in between which is known as the cerebrospinal fluid. It protects the brain from internal shocks, injuries, jerks, jolts and all. Corpus callosum, this part is a connective tissue that holds the cerebrum hemisphere. The cerebrum is the largest portion of the brain that is again divided into two halves, right and left, by this corpus callosum. And rest of the parts are there, but we will mainly focus on cerebrum, then cerebellum, pons and medulla oblongata. These are the main parts which we will be focusing. As I said students, that brain is protected inside a bony covering called the skull or cranium. The brain is covered by three membranes called meninges, having a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. The cell body of the neurons constitute the gray matter and axon of the neuron constitute the white matter. This is very important line students that gray matter, what is gray matter which is found inside the brain? It is nothing but the cell body of the neurons which are aggregated together. Similarly, the white matter is comprised of the axon which again consists of the aggregates of axon together. Now what is the function of what is the function of the cerebrum? Cerebrum is the largest portion of the brain and it is concerned with so many instructions which is going on in our body. Like first of all, it controls all voluntary activities. Like whether we are moving our hand, leg or whatever, or feet, we are moving from this side to that side, all things are controlled by the cerebrum. Even our personality, our speech, memory, means how we will talk, how we will behave, how, what is the personality we will develop, everything is controlled by the cerebrum. Apart from this, it is also concerned with sensory perception, like vision, smell, hearing, vision like Whatever we see, whether danger is coming or whether beautiful uh, scenery, scenery which can be seen all around, all things, then smell. What is the smell of the food being cooked in the kitchen? Then hearing, what sound, high pitch sound, low pitch sound or sound pollution. All these things are entirely interpreted by our cerebrum. 
that is the largest portion of the brain next is hypothalamus it is a part which hangs from the forebrain it mainly controls our body temperature thirst and urine output the type of food we are eating that is we are hungry or not or satiate feeling or whatever it is concerned with secretion of hormone and controlling pituitary also students so these are the main function of hypothalamus next is olfactory lobe now this three parts which i am talking about the cerebrum the hypothalamus the olfactory lobe all are parts of the forebrain the last part for today's discussion is olfactory lobe this contain receptors which are organ of smell as in this picture students you can see that a person is taking in the smell of a flower which is being bloomed now who is actually receiving the smell molecules or odor molecules it is actually the olfactory lobe which consists of the receptor for the smell which is mainly located in our nasal chamber or nasal cavity now whenever the receptor will be receiving the odor molecules it will act as a stimulus which will again be carried by the sensory neuron to the brain to which part of the brain to the olfactory lobe part of the brain and it will result in interpretation of the smell we are receiving whether it is a sweet smell or whether it is a bad odor whatever it is all is being interpreted by this cerebrum portion but the thing is mainly located that is the receptor is mainly located in the olfactory lobe so students i hope you have understood the lesson up to this go through the video lesson so that you can understand it and ask me more questions wherever you are getting the doubt Thank you students have a nice day